mentioned, I'm by the names Mahanda Tony Joseph. And my research topic is vegetation monitoring for high voltage transmission and distribution line corridors using satellite stereo images, a case study of Ginger District. So as we know that uh, the most common method of ground inspection, the most common method of vegetation management for the high voltage lines is ground inspection. In, in developed countries, other methods such as using SAR unmanned aerial vehicles are being proposed. But in Uganda, customers are often complaining about power blackouts. Some of these power blackouts have been caused by vegetation encroachment and efforts to move away from this ground inspection method have been fruitless because the area inspection methods, the ones that developed countries are using, are expensive. So, like we like had said, vegetation monitoring in Uganda is highly done by ground inspection. This method is tiresome. It is subject to human judgment. It exposes the inspectors to harsh environmental conditions. So I'm suggesting on another alternative of using satellite stereo images to complement the ground inspection. So my study area, as you can see, is Jinja. Jinja is located, Jinja district is located in the eastern region of Uganda. The district has, so far as of 2017, it had one transmission line that is the Jagai Toro, the one that they took every. Then it has many distribution lines of different voltages, 33 and 11, as the diagram there shows. So my main objective is to detect potential dangerous vegetation along or near these high voltage lanes. The specific objectives would then be to model the spatial relationship between the vegetation and the high voltage lanes at the time of image acquisition. Then to determine the degree of vegetation encroachment on the high voltage power lines in the study area. So if my research is implemented, or if it is taken up, then we and UTCL will be able to monitor these high voltage lanes at lower costs. You know that satellite images have consistent passes and there is no human judgment involved. Ultimately, cases of power blackout due to vegetation monitoring will be reduced. So in my methodology, I used Landsat 7 data. First and foremost, before that, if I'm to get a stereo image for the whole Jinja district, the district is so big, eh? so such an image would be expensive for me as an individual researcher. So I'm trying to determine if we, a place exactly in Jinja where I'm going to carry out this study. So that is the first part of the methodology. I didn't find a particular study area in Jinja district. I used Landsat 7. Why not Landsat 8? Yet 8 is the latest. It is because the data, the studio data that I was able to access was Econos data, and it had been captured in 2011. And by 2011, we know it was Landsat 7 that was in operation. So the, the data, of course, needed this stripping, then the shape file of Ginger District, then I clip, then I get the raster map of Ginger District, then I use the various force color composites together with the NDVI data set. Then the power line corridors, I got that information from the well lived corridors. I got that information from transmission and umeme. Then I'm able to get the vegetated and non vegetated areas. When I impose the power line corridors on that, I'm able to get the study area. Then part two, when I get that particular area in Ginger, now I'm trying to monitor, to do the vegetation monitoring in that study area. So in the first part of the methodology, I'm trying to identify the tall trees and other false positives. In the second part, I'm trying to get the dictal surface model. Then in the third part down there, I'm trying to determine the degree of vegetation encroachment as we are going to, as we are going to see. So part one of the methodology, the first one there is the raster data that has been 
the Landsat 7 that has been distripped. Then that one is the true color composite. Then this one is the false color composite, 4, 3, 2. The other one is the, the false color composite, 4, 5, 3. Now that is the NDVI data set. And the NDVI data set, I have to give it a threshold so that I have non-vegetation and vegetation. But to get that threshold, I have to look at the first three data sets such that all the information they have, the NDVI has represented them. So the black rectangle you're seeing there, that is the one I zeroed down as the particular area in ginger that I'm going to investigate. Then part two of the methodology, now a top had been done, eh? a topographic map of a certain road in my study area. So I managed to acquire the data from the people who did that data. So I had ground control. And the first part two of the methodology is the also rectification. And the first among the last two rows there, there is a root mean square error of 32.5 centimeters. But that is good enough because that is for the first point there. Because now the data we are using, the equinox is to one meter spatial resolution. So by the time I get 32.5, that's good enough. Now, here, this is the chessboard grid. It is an idea of object-based image analysis. I'm trying to make sure that every grid cell has one theme, maybe let's say forest, or the forest, maybe bare land, but of course it is not possible. And we shall see the impact of it not being possible that every grid cell has one thematic class. Then, then those are the gray level co-occurrence matrices, the ones that I'm going to use to calculate the homogeneity. Briefly, to explain what exactly I'm doing, we know that trees that are tall have a rough texture. So if they have a rough texture, then their homogeneity will be what? Low, okay? So, of course, there's vegetation with rough canopy. That is the tall trees. But it could also be short vegetation with rough what? Can canopy. Those are false positives. But it can also be short vegetation with smooth canopy. But what is making the homogeneity be low is because it is grouped with rough textured, textured elements like roads and so on. Those are false positives. So this is under the, this is under the spatial modeler of Edas Imagine. And that is the model of the homogeneity matrices. There is a lot of information to learn there. But to save time, this is the, the result of running that model. And you can see that the green ones are now the vegetation. If you compare with the past one, you see that the green ones have really what? Reduced there. So the green ones consist of tall trees and other false positives. That is the result of image segmentation, calculating the homogeneity and the NDVI classification. Then after getting that data of tall trees, now in the part two of the methodology, I'm trying to generate the, 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 the digital surface model. So I start by running the tie points. Of course, there is creating the block, then the tie points, then there is interior orientation, exterior orientation, and of course, after you get the digital surface model, it ends with the author photo. So that is the digital surface model. This one on this other side is the digital surface model. Now there are issues. If I just run the digital surface model normally, I will get issues like buildings appearing like hills. And that issue is because the SMACL algorithm that most softwares are using hasn't given the best patent percentage. The patent, patent percentage is still low. That's why the digital elevation model buildings are appearing as hills. So we have to modify, you can modify the logarithm by coding it in Python. Currently, it is the dynamic programming algorithms that are doing best. All alternative, like I can use another software, like the other one was Edas Imagine. Now I'm using MV because MV can monitor the parallax and tell me that the parallax is still high. So please don't proceed. So then, after getting the digital surface model, I had to find out whether it was accurate. So what I did 
If that is my study area, that is the true color composite. I found a road there. I take the road to Google Earth Pro. In Google Earth Pro, I digitize it as a line. So I'm able to get reduced levels. So I have up hills and down hills. And then I can identify those same points in the topo data that I had so that I'm able to read off height differences in the field and then height differences in the model. When I compare height differences in the field and height differences in the model, I find out that the root mean square is 70 centimeters for the height, and that is really high. But remember, Econos is one meter spatial resolution. So, of course, 70 centimeters is good to Econos. So there, that the, the remedy would be using a more finer spatial resolution of like Plages, one exterior, mm -hmm. which I couldn't access by then. So we, we achieved our objective one already. Now we are going to objective two, which is the objective one was the digital surface model, which I showed you. Now we are going to objective two. Now these way leaves, the growth limit zone, notice limit zone, I'm getting them from the transmission and Umeme documents. So in EDAS, imagine there, there is the dam. There, up there, I'm able to get buffers, of course, from the Umeme UETCL documents. I'm able to buffer there. So those three windows, I'm linking them, such that when I'm moving in the buffers, here I'm moving in the, in the layer having the tall trees and the false positives. And there, I'm, use, I'm moving in the 3D window, the same way you move in Google Earth Pro, when you zoom in in there, you'll be able to see things in real life. Eh? We are seeing them. Now, I wasn't able to see the distribution lines because for them, they are smaller. The, the, the line spacing is smaller than the one meter for the Econos data that I was using. But are you seeing that? Just your Jagari Toro line? That is the Jagari Toro line. That's the way I was seeing it. And the, but just down it, there is a road. Of course, that road has distribution lines, but you can't see that. You can't see the distribution line. So on the Jagari Toro line, I only identified some trees at the growth limit zone, some, some at the notice limit zone. So that is the objective too of monitoring the degree of vegetation one encroachment. So discussion of results. We, as I'd said that even if I did pan sharpening and look at the images like this one is after pan sharpening, only the transmission lines could be seen. So to see the distribution lines, I need finer data. For instance, the one for plagiars, one A, eh? and I wasn't able to do field validation of whatever I had there. The reason why I wasn't able to is that the data I had was for 2011, and this is 2020. Those are 10 years later. So hopefully next week, I'm going to refine this research using Clarges 1 exterior that is current. And I will present this research again with field photographs, evidence that this mechanism, this method is really the way to go. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Tony.